Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. So today I'm going to be talking about Howard Jerome Kessler. He's uh, the idiot who wrote this book on non-standard analysis. Okay. So, and I'm going to be looking at chapter two to show you just how illogical everything he writes actually is. So he says, we are now ready to explain what is meant by the slope of a curve or the velo velocity of a moving point. It, it's sort of so, in, it's, it's so incoherent that it's hard, hard to make sense because uh, uh, the velocity of a moving point is just not even wrong. I mean, points don't move, you know, and they don't have velocity. So it's just f from the very first sentence, it's mind numbing garbage. Secondly, it says, consider a real function f and a real number a in the domain, etc., etc. So he's trying to make it sound uh, mainstream formal drivel. When x has value a, then f of x, f of x has value f of a. And then it goes through and it says, suppose the value of x is changed to a hyperreal number without actually even defining what a hyperreal number is, which is infinitely close to but not equal to a. So wait a minute. He says that a and a plus delta x are infinitely close but not equal. That means that one number follows the other. That means that a plus delta x follows a and there is no number between a and a plus delta x. That can be the only explanation, which is total garbage because uh, what applies in the reals, according to this baboon, Abraham Robinson, who was born uh, in Waldenburg, Ger Germany, and was the author of the bullshit known as non-standard analysis, uh, says that it works through the transfer principle. So, I mean, if it works in the reals, it's got to work in the hyperreals, right? You, you, you can't say that two numbers are right next to each other. Okay, so total confusion, and we haven't even uh, seen, what is it, one, two, three sentences, and nothing makes sense so far. Then the new value of f of x will be f of a plus delta x. And it says in this process, the value of x will be changed by a non-zero infinitesimal amount delta x. Well, uh, I th you know, one thinks, or why I would have thought that the purpose of an infinitesimal is that it's non-zero anyway. So why he mentions that makes no sense because if it was zero, then we'd have a problem. But what I want to show you also people from this uh, textbook is that uh, contrary to what you were told uh, by those fucking bastards like Professor Jack Azinger and others on this crap site uh, Quora. Um, mathematics academia may consider calculus to be true and to be based on proof and rigor over the past 400 years, but that's absolutely false, okay? So he says everything in it follows from extremely simples of, from extremely simple axioms of set theory. I mean, the guy's an idiot, and this guy is a professor of mathematics uh, who is an ex-Harvard alumnus, okay? So he says, math mathematicians, what he means are mainstream moron academics are not concerned with the objections. And then he, he goes into a diatribe here in which every one of his comments are wrong. And this cunt, this cunt has been... Uh, one of the main reasons that none of my work actually got published, by the way, because of the bullshit that he writes over here. And every one of those, uh, exp every one of those uh, points that he makes, one, two, three, and four, are false, okay? So, so um, I'll come back to it in a while. That's Jerome Kessler, who was, by the way, a doctoral student of let's see, of uh, Alfred Tarski. <laughs> now, Alfred Tarski was that one equals two idiot. Remember he and Banash, I think it was Stefan Banash, uh, came up with a Tarski or Banash-Tarski uh, theorem. 
total bullshit there as well. And that's based on set theory and axioms too. So um, let me get back to the document before I get carried away. There is so much BS in here that it goes up to your chin and quickly suffocates you as it rises way above your head. So in this process, uh, he says the value of X will be changed by a non-zero infinitesimal amount while f of x will become f of a plus delta x minus f of a. And then he says the ratio of change. Well, first of all, no change is taking place because this is a finite difference. Okay, Nothing is changing, by the way. That is one of the bullshitisms. That's a new word I've created by Isaac Newton and his moronic followers like Gilbert Strang, James Stewart, that deceased gay author of concepts, uh, Stewart, calculus and concepts and he says then this ratio is used in the definition of slope of f which we now give i'll place a link to this so that you can see if you can make any sense out of it because guess what i can't it's total nonsense so he says s is said to be the slope of f at a if s is equal to st of this now st uh, i believe reading on stands for the standard part now this here is is just hand waving BS again because it basically assumes, and we'll look at this diagram here. It assumes that the hyperreal line uh, is a tangent line. The hyperreal is a tangent line at this point here, where where my arrow is pointing, and here it's actually a secant. Okay, so he, he's saying. They're both the same height. It can't be a secant and a tangent line, okay? And this is one of the things that Nisley pointed out in his uh, calculus crisis. Uh, Nisley also tends to agree with this BS. Uh, there's no such thing as uh, crossing the curve at an infinitely small space. It never crosses the curve at the point of tangency, okay? So... Uh, another thing is that as you go along and you read on, uh, a lot of assumptions are made without without any explanation or any proof whatsoever, by the way. One of the things that gets uh, thrown at you is the fact that when you look at this expression here, uh, the standard part is automatically the derivative. Well, how do they know that? <laughs> well, they don't. Um, there, there, that is just an assumption. It's, a, it's an assumption without any proof whatsoever, and it's based on Newton's experimental method where he takes a non-parallel secant line and finds, ah, that the expression in X is the derivative. But these infinite bastard idiots don't understand anything about calculus. And, and again, this, this textbook is proof that that mainstream mathematics hasn't been rigorous okay hasn't been rigorous n not not even the past 150 years by the way and he's this idiot Heisinger says issues of set issues of set theory which existed have been solved since then i'm sorry they haven't the zfc axiom, axioms are beliefs they're not facts okay they're absolute nonsense. And thank goodness that the ancient Greeks didn't subscribe to this brain rot. Because if they did, you wouldn't have geometry. You wouldn't have calculus. You wouldn't even know how to work with fractions, you fucking morons. And I'm here I'm especially addressing mainstream mathematics professors. All of you, by the way. Every single one of you. None of you get exemption. You're all fucking morons. Think about that. So uh, I get punished by not being able to publish because of this lying bastard, this ignorant lying bastard cunt, Jack Hazinger, okay, of the University of Illinois at Chicago. This is a crime, people. It's a crime, okay? So... I'm getting worked up again because I get so angry with this injustice, you know, when a piece of shit like Jack Hazinger can do so much damage, a piece of shit like Gilbert Strang and all their mainstream colleagues. 
it's an irony. It really is. Because shit like this gets published. I mean, this is absolute drivel. Every sentence in here is questionably uh, rational, and it turns out it's just plain wrong. Okay, so this idiot, Howard Jerome Keisler, didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And he simply went on the non-standard analysis of this reptile-looking creature here, Abraham Robinson. Okay, so, and, and guess, uh, yeah, as I told you, guess who his uh, doctoral advisor was? It was Alfred Tarski. Okay, Th this, this reptile-looking creature. He reminds me a little bit of Roy Kahn, who used to be Trump's lawyer. You know, they all sort of seem to have something in common. You know, look at those reptilian eyes. And uh, never mind, I shouldn't generalize, but sometimes it's hard, hard not to. So, um, non-standard analysis is a bunch of crap, okay? It, it, it shows, by the way, people, it shows clearly that there hasn't been a rigorous formulation, okay? Because if there were a rigorous formulation, why would there be a need for non-standard analysis? Think about that, you morons. All of you out there who are lackeys of professors, there wouldn't be a need for it. Okay, well, I'm not going to spend any more time on this BS, but I just wanted to get that off my chest. I'm John Gabriel, and before I sign off, if you're not already a subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about this. Click like. I have many enemies in these bastards. Many, many, many from all over the globe. And I am an existential threat to them, by the way, because I would remove all their uh, PhD qualifications and their masters. I mean, I'd let them have a BS, but a BS is just bullshit. So <laughs> uh, MS is more shit and a PhD is piled higher and deeper. If you're not already a subscriber, become one, tell your friends about this and follow me on academia.edu. Till next time. Goodbye.